Well, I first met uh, Reverend Duff, I think it was in 1952 when he came up to the rural area where I grew up and established one of the early village missions fields. Reverend Duff's heart, his main thrust was evangelism. He wanted people to come to know the Lord and, be, and because of his growing up, where his father was an itinerant evangelist up and down the West Coast, um, holding evangelistic services in mining towns and logging camps and so on. Reverend Duff caught that vision and was concerned about rural America and wanted to provide spiritual leadership for rural America. And we simply can't lose that vision 60 years later. At the time, Reverend Duff was a pastor of a church in Washington State. But because there, his father had instilled this vision in those children, on his father's deathbed, he said, Walter, I want you to send out a hundred missionaries into rural America. Reverend Duff never forgot that, and when the time was right, he became the head of Village Missions. And in his lifetime, he not only sent out 100, he sent out over 500 missionaries during his lifetime. I saw firsthand what Village Missions can do in a rural area where there's no other spiritual leadership. My dad is in heaven today because of Village Missions. I'll never forget the first time I heard my dad pray because there was a softness that came into his voice I had never heard before, and I was a college kid at that time. And that was all as a result of Village Missions. Uh, he would not be in heaven today if we had, didn't have a missionary there. I just cannot emphasize enough the difference that spiritual leadership on the field makes. You know, we have a lot of religious programs on t TV and that sort of thing. But when you lose a loved one, TV isn't gonna help you. When you need to be married or you have a spiritual problem or you need counseling, TV isn't gonna help you. The needs of the rural America are exactly the same as any other area. And a lot of the areas in the rural areas do not have a pastor who can respond to those needs. And that's the need that we're trying to fulfill. In those towns where there wasn't any central place, he encouraged the missionaries to build the church as a, kind of the community center. And then he emphasized, of course, building relationships. And the only way you can do that is to get out among them and to serve them. His, his basic thrust, he loved people and he wanted them to come to know the Lord. And so if you went into a situation with a new missionary where maybe uh, people on your board weren't, uh, didn't know the Lord or they weren't living as you thought they should and so on, uh, it was always to love the people and preach the word. If we see people on, the, on our fields that uh, are problem people, we love them in spite of who they are, and we preach the word and let uh, the word take care of those problems. And I think that's one of the great strengths that he uh, built into his ministry that has really been effective. Another thing that he um, was very, very uh, worried about, frankly, and that is that somehow village missions would become another denomination. And he stressed over and over that we are not a denomination. We are not, we don't even have village mission churches. There are rural churches that we provide leadership to. And that's one reason why for many years, Reverend Duff refused to own any, for village mission to own any real estate because he felt that'd be one more step toward making it a denomination and he didn't he wanted to avoid that at all costs his, again his main thrust was to get people to know the lord with everything that lay within my power i would see that village missions did not dilute either the word or its methods and this kind of thing now yes we have to change our methods to stay with the culture but the number one thrust of village missions, and he wanted to be this way again, was evangelism. He viewed village missions as a mean, as a type of evangelism where we use the local church. Now certainly he agreed with mass evangelism and that sort of thing, but the, the analogy he used was that the, the church is a ship and it throws out the lifeline to save a dying, a, a, a drowning person. And he 
the, he, they use the lifeline to pull that person to the sh ship, but then it takes the ship to get them to the shore. So that uh, he, he viewed the, sh the church as an integral part of the total evangelistic process. You know, as I think back, uh, Reverend Duff had stepped down and he wrote me a letter. And the point of the letter was, he never set out to create an organization. That just happened. He set out to provide leadership to rural America, spiritual leadership to rural America, so that people could come to know Christ. That was his number one passion. And in many ways, he didn't like all of the organizational baggage that came along with it, but it had to be. But at, as he had stepped down, he was amazed at what had happened over the years while he's out there busy introducing people to Christ. This organization grew up and uh, he said, that's great, but that was never my goal. It was to bring people to Christ. I think back uh, 50 years ago, uh, while people weren't in church, they still had a kind of a basic understanding of the Bible and the major messages of the Bible and so on. So that when you talk to a person about right and wrong, you had some common basis. But today, uh, that doesn't exist. In, in rural America like it did back then. So that our job is even uh, tougher because we have to start with the really the basics and get those across first before we can really talk to them about the, their own salvation. Thinking about facing Reverend Duff in heaven, I think I would report to him that the mission at this point is in good hands. The board that we have is much broader in terms of uh, types of individuals and uh, uh, abilities and so on than when he left. Uh, it's a very strong board spiritually, but the main thing is they have his heart. They still understand his vision of what Village Missions has been set out to do. And uh, to a person on that board, uh, every one of them is faithful in that and all of the decisions that are made by that board are made for the benefit of the village missionaries to enable them to be more effective where they are. Um, and that's not through any effort that I have made. It's because the Lord has had his hand on the mission and we've, we've uh, trusted him to bring in the right people and he has. It amazes me uh, the people that are on the board and their abilities and so on. Long ago, I learned when I asked a missionary, how's your church doing? I always say, how's your church doing spiritually? Because if you don't, they think you're talking about numbers. And I often ask the question, how do you put the value on a single soul? We send them, suppose we send a missionary out. We spend a lot of money getting them on the field and getting them set up and, and going. And in his ministry, he's there for 30 years. He only brings one person to Christ. Has that been a failure? That ministry been a failure? Obviously not. You cannot put a value on one soul. And uh, so I know the, the mega church philosophy is that these young men coming out, I think that, uh, well, they have stars in their eyes, they're all gonna build a mega church. But how do you build a mega church in Dow County, Washington, which is a dead mill town? But there are people there whose souls Christ died for, and they need to be brought to know Him. You know, when I think back, uh, having served on the board of directors since 1971, I've watched uh, Reverend Duff as a leader, and I watched him make mistakes. Uh, I watched him through uh, the problems that were not his making that came to him. I've watched him deal with problem missionaries, but through it all, he had a firm faith that this was the Lord's work and the Lord had his hand on it and the Lord would bring it through. And it, it, it has proven true over the years. He had an unshakable faith. And when he would make an error, he would no question, admit it. The board would accept it, he's human. And we would go on, and God blessed that all the way along. 
uh, and uh, the, the one th uh, person I have left of it is, is really unshakable faith in the face of all kinds of adversities, whether they be financial or with personnel or whatever. Uh, he, he had this unshakable faith that the Lord would bring him through.